We've seen that in the prisoner's dilemma, both players have a dominant strategy, a strategy that's a best response to anything the other player might do. And that dominant strategy is to not cooperate. As a result, there's only a single Nash equilibrium. It's the Nash equilibrium where both players play their dominant strategy. So neither player ends up cooperating, and the two players end up at an equilibrium outcome where they get a lower payoff than they would if they both cooperated. But they can't find their way towards cooperation because of the strong incentives for non-cooperation. Unless someone forces them to cooperate, they'll be stuck in this non-cooperative equilibrium. Now we might think that we could solve this by having the players play this game repeatedly so that over time they'll develop cooperation in the game because after all, that'll give them a better outcome. So let's imagine that these two players are playing this game several times in a row. So suppose they played first and then they played a second time and a third time and maybe a fourth time and a fifth time. So they know they're going to play this game five different times. So we now have a sequential game where in each stage they're playing a simultaneous game, but they keep doing it five different times. Might cooperation develop in this repeated game setting? Well, as in any sequential game, we'd want to solve that game from the bottom up to find the sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium. So we'd start at this final stage. And in that final stage, they know they're only playing the game one more time. So it's exactly the same game that we've been analyzing, and we know they both have a dominant strategy to not cooperate in this case. So we know they're not going to cooperate with each other in that final stage. They know at the second to final stage that they won't cooperate in the last stage, so there's nothing they can do in this stage to induce cooperation later on. So that means in the second to last stage, they're facing exactly the same incentives as they would if they only played the game once. There's nothing they can do to affect the outcome in the final stage, so they're simply playing the game as if it was the final game. And so again, they have a dominant strategy to not cooperate. They know this when they're playing this game. They know they're not going to cooperate in the last two games. There's nothing they can do to induce cooperation in the last two games. So they once again play the game as if it was a single shot game. And we know the outcome of that game, which is to not cooperate. Same with this game. They know they're not going to cooperate from then on. And then same with the first game. So we see that when players play this game repeatedly, a finite number of times, whether it's three times or five times or ten times or a hundred times, cooperation or the idea of cooperation unravels from the bottom up. Players know they're not going to cooperate late in the game, so there's nothing they can do to induce cooperation, so they play each game as if it was a single shot game. And cooperation doesn't emerge simply because we're playing the game repeatedly. Subgame perfection and the logic of subgame perfection unravels any notion of cooperation, and we're still stuck in the non cooperative equilibrium at each stage of that repeated game.